when she passes, each one she passes goes. Ah. When she walks, it's like a samba that a swing so. I've had, there have been a lot of requests for a bossa nova song. This is perhaps the quintessential bossa nova song, the Antonio Carlos Jobim uh, hit, uh, Girl from Ipanema, or the Portuguese title is Garota Gipanema. This song was inspired by Tom Jobim sitting at a sidewalk cafe, watching a girl on her way to the Ipanema beach. Uh, and uh, he uh, noted her and uh, was inspired. She became a muse and this became a song. Today I'm going to show you the chords for this song, uh, section by section. There's two main sections of the song. This is the transcription of Girl from Ipanema from the Getz Gilberto album, which was the original album the song was released on in North America. The other thing we're going to talk about in here is the bossa rhythm. So there is a very specific rhythm and I'll teach that to you in here. It's also outlined in a short and I'm going to put a link to the short uh, on the bossa nova rhythm up here so you can just go and have a look at that directly if you choose. So let's get into it. The song begins, uh, the song begins with an A section, a simple short verse that is simply a sequence of chords. So let's look at these uh, Girl from Ipanema chords up close and personal. We start off with a chord that is a G sharp 6-9. Uh, these no, these chords are named in a particular way to draw attention to the bass note of each chord so that you can see the stepwise motion of the bass leading us through the song. Okay? So here's our first one, G sharp 6 9. And so then we're going up to an A sharp minor 6, which is up here at the 6th fret. Now we're just really going to lower the pointer finger. The other fingers stay where they are. And that gives us an F sharp major 7 with an A root. Then we, uh, now we're going to lower the uh, ring, pinky comes off, ring finger and uh, middle come down one fret. And then we go back to our uh, G, G sharp 6 9. Okay, and those are the chords of the main verse. Let's go to the B section. We're going to start off, it starts off with a, a D major 7th at the 5th fret. So, oh, but he watches so, and then to G7. Then back to the fifth fret, and this the second line is how can he tell her he to an A sharp seven. Then to his D sharp minor seven. So he's going up one semitone on these uh, on these particular ones. Now he's at the sixth fret. Yes, he would give his heart, and then B seven. Gladly. So he's at the seventh fret there, and then we go up to the eighth fret. But each day, as she walks to the, and then that's an F minor seven down to an A sharp seven flat five, which is this. This is a very commonly used chord in lots of samba and bossa nova because it creates so much tension in a simple chord voicing. And then D sharp minor seven, she looks straight ahead, not at, and then G sharp uh, seven flat five. Same voicing we used a moment ago on the A sharp seven flat five, now just two frets lower. Okay, and that creates, that's interesting, it creates a simile structure. But each day when she walks to the sea, she looks straight ahead, not at, he. So it's a modulating step down that returns us, or and that returns us within turnaround distance to our G sharp six nine, which is this. When she passes, he smiles, but she doesn't see. 
she doesn't see. And at the ending, that chord that we're using there is the uh, F sharp diminished with an A root that we originally used in the beginning of the verse. And now I'm just going to do a quick run through of that, that whole B section. So, oh, buddy, won't you so sad? I used to live in BC and one of my neighbors there was the internationally famous Brazilian jazz guitar virtuoso Celso Machado. And I took a couple of workshops with Celso. Uh, he's forgotten more about bossa nova than most of us will ever learn. A brilliant, brilliant guitar player. And I'm going to put a link to some of Celso's material up here in a little card and you can go and have a listen to him. He's a wonderful musician. So he taught me, uh, Celso Machado taught me the bossa rhythm. He said this uh, rhythms in Brazil are extremely specific and it's important to play them uh, correctly. Uh, and so this is the rhythm that is used that, uh, to outline the groove of this song. And uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can see. I'm going to use as an example just this first G sharp 6 9. And what we're doing is we play, uh, we play with this claw grip. You'll see me playing with this claw grip where I'm doing this. So I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm squeezing my fingertips together to just pluck the strings that I want to grab. I match, in this case, I'm playing all three strings D, G, B, and I'm playing the root on the low E. And so what I'm doing is I'm playing, uh, so it's all, all fingers, then just fingers, no thumb, then, so the second part of the phrase is thumb fingers, and then it's finger, thumb finger, that takes you across the measure marker, and then we do uh, the same thing again, but this time with eighth quarter, quarter, so, so here it is, pinch, so it's, Pinch, just fingers, thumb, fingers, finger, thumb, finger, finger, thumb, finger. And that's the rhythm that we're using throughout the song, according to Celso Machado. So the one thing we have to talk about with the bossa rhythm is the bossa rhythm is a two measure pattern. Okay, which is this. I'll, I'll play a, a two measure pattern of it. Okay, so that's the full pattern, but uh, there's a couple of places in the song where I'm only playing a chord for one measure. What we do is we chop the pattern in half. I play the first half on the, uh, I play the first half of the pattern for the first chord, the second half of the pattern for the second chord. And here's what that looks like at the end here. But each day as she walks to the sea, look, she looks straight ahead, but not at ease. Okay, so I'm playing the first half of the pattern, second half of the pattern, first half of the pattern, second half of the pattern. Okay, so today we had a look at the chords for uh, Girl from Epanema. Um, strongly recommend, I strongly recommend that you listen to the uh, Gats Gilberto album version, which this is a transcription of. I'll put a link to the Gats Gilberto version up here and you can go and have a listen to it. It's extremely educational, especially if you're not super familiar with this style spend some time listening deeply and carefully to it. It's beautiful music. Your ears will thank you. Your heart will thank you and your fingers will thank you. Okay. So do some listening. Uh, we looked at the chords. We've looked at the rhythm. Um, what I would strongly recommend doing is just practice playing, uh, each line first. And then when you can play each line with the boss rhythm, 
uh, put the recording on on YouTube, maybe at 75% uh, speed, and try playing along with the song. And you should find that the rhythm that I've shown you and the chords that I've given you are the ones that match that uh, Getz Gilberto album that came out in 63 or whenever it was. So have fun playing a little bit of Bossa Nova, and uh, I hope you enjoy yourself as much as I enjoy playing this stuff and listening to it. And uh, if you want to learn some other Bossa Nova stuff, uh, you're going to find some links over here or over here for some other songs that you can get into. Uh, have fun and uh, come on back and visit me soon.